Hello there. Welcome back to Berserker's Den. Thank you for joining us today. Today we are making a Kiwi Ice Blast. What you've just seen me do is cut, de-skin and put 2.3 kilograms of Kiwi into a tub of about 8 litres of warm water. I've let that sit for two days so the flavours can come out and now I'm going to strain the bag and let the juices come out into the water and that water is going to be what we'll use with our honey. So let's get on to that. So while that's draining, let me tell you a bit more about the ingredients that we're going to use today. To start, we'll talk about the honey. The honey we're using today is eucalyptus honey. It is produced from honeybees pollinating in the blossoms of the eucalyptus trees and sometimes gathering honeydew found in the bark of these trees. Eucalyptus honey has a medium dark colour and may have a red tinge. It has been found the darker the colour of the honey of the of the eucalyptus honey, the more pronounced and reddish the tint will be. Eucalyptus honey is a medium sweet with a rather strong earthy flavour with undertones of menthol and caramel. That's where I'm getting the ice blast from with the kiwi ice blast. Somewhat surprisingly there is no bitterness with only a slight woody and medicinal aftertaste. Now as you can see from the jar this honey is not local to the UK. I've had to get this honey imported from a particular town in Spain. I've done a little bit of research on the company and the place of where it's come from and I can guarantee that is 100% eucalyptus honey. So on to the next bit of our ingredients. The main thing that we need, other than our kiwi and the honey, is yeast. The yeast I'm using today is Mangrove Jacks CY17. This particular strain of yeast is for making both dry and sweet wines and also rosé wines. This moderate fermenting yeast is also perfectly suited for making country style wines from fruits and flowers as these flavours and aromas are naturally enhanced which is why I chose this particular yeast, is to get all that flavour from the kiwi. The alcohol tolerance for this yeast is 14% ABV. Now it says on the instructions that no rehydration is required. So for this particular batch, I'm going to use half the packet and I'm just going to dump it straight in to a must. These jars have been sitting in warm water just to help with the pour. So we just put those aside for now. And then we're gonna measure out our yeast. Now that we've done that, we can add our honey to our fermenter and then a bit of our kiwi juice and give it a stir around. This particular fermenter that I'm using is called a Fur Monster. As you can see, it has a wider mouth which makes access for fruits and bags and all that sort of jazz ten times easier. If you've seen my previous videos, you'd see me struggling to cram raspberries, cranberries, all types of berries into a little hole this will make life so much easier don't worry about leaving a little bit of residue in your tubs you can swirl this around 
with our water later. Now that our kiwi is done straining, we can take the bag out and pour maybe about two litres worth into our fermenter. That way we can stir it around and get all that honey dissolved into our fermenter. Now what's really handy, because I'm using this wide mouth fermenter, I can get my spoon in and give it a good stir. And don't forget to introduce that oxygen either. Going back to our honey residue that we left in our tubs, all I've done is poured some hot water into our tubs, pulled probably around about 60 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees, 60 degrees Celsius, not that hot, and I'm just stirring it around just so all that honey can dissolve. And then pour it straight in. Right now what I'm doing, I'm taking the hydrometer reading. This will be our original gravity. This will help us work out how much alcohol we end up with at the end. With our original gravity being that, we'll probably reach 8% alcohol, maybe 8.5, which is okay, I don't mind that. I'm gonna back sweeten it as I said anyway. So I'm looking for more for the flavor than the alcohol. Another plus of having a wider mouth, could have just done that, cool as that. With that all being done, you just want to screw your cap on. Give the meat some love. Airlock in. And 
and then let that sit. You're going to leave this sit for around about two weeks, depending on the yeast strain. I've never used this yeast before, so I don't know how fast it actually acts. So I'm going to say two to three weeks. Then we'll come back, rack into a clean container with our Camden tablets and our stabilizer with some more kiwi and some more honey. It's been a little over two weeks since we started our kiwi project. The airlock has started slowing down. There's still a little bit of activity in there, but not very much. Maybe one bubble every three minutes. So it's come to the end of, of the fermentation. What we're going to be doing in this section is taking a hydrometer reading to find out what alcohol we've made, how much percentage. Then I'll be back sweetening in with some more kiwis and a little bit more honey. Okay, so that hydrometer reading was saying 1.010. So to work it out, you get your original gravity and your final gravity, and then you subtract that. Then with that number, you times that by 131.25, which gives us, put it up here, 7.35%. 7.35% is a bit lower than I did it want this to go. However, with this one, I am focusing more on the flavors than the alcohol. So in order to do this, we're going to back sweeten. All this means is that you stop the fermentation process and then you add more sweeteners and flavorings to it and then you just let that set for a little while. So for this, I'm gonna be using 875 grams of kiwi, and I'll be using the remainder from one jar of the eucalyptus honey. So that'll be 250 grams. In order to fully stop the fermentation process, I'll be using two crushed Camden tablets and two teaspoons of stabilizer. chuck it into your new vessel the next part of the process is you're going to be racking 
your fluid from this vessel into this one. The aim is you want to leave behind all the residue left behind. All this is is just dead yeasts and proteins that have sunk to the bottom. In order to do this I am using an auto siphon. Just put your tube into the secondary vessel and then you siphon into the first and you just give it a couple of pumps and then you'll start draining into your new vessel. And that is what you are left with. That is all the dead yeast and proteins that are just left behind. It's not harmful to say, but it's not the best tasting and you might want a clearer look in brew. Okay guys, I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I'm just gonna leave this for a few days, maybe a week, just for the flavors to come out and I'm hoping maybe some of that green color from the kiwi will come up and spread through it. The only thing that I'll be doing after that, after those few days, is I'll be racking that again, like we just did, but into a glass vessel. I find glass vessels are the best way to store them in the long run for them to clear out. And then after a couple of months in that glass vessel, I'll be, I'll be putting it into bottles from there. If you'd like to keep updated on this one, follow me on my socials up above. I'll be posting videos and some little snippy bits. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, cheers guys.